Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. And from the title of this video, I'm sure you're wondering why we're talking about Donald Trump's endorsement and who we're actually talking about in specific. Well, the state of Arizona has a Senate race that is deemed to be extremely competitive. The incumbent senator is Senator Mark Kelly. He's a Democrat who was first elected back in 2020, formerly an astronaut, or I guess currently an astronaut, but now, of course, working in Washington, D.C. Now, the Republicans are eyeing up this race, but to begin, the race is occurring because Mark Kelly was first elected due to an absence left by uh, former Senator John McCain due to his unfortunate passing. And that prompted a special election that coincided with the 2020 presidential election, and the Democrats won that race. So with the regularly scheduled election in 2022, Arizona is now back up. And the nominee in specific that I'm going to be talking about today is Blake Masters. Now, Blake Masters is a businessman. He has no prior electoral experience, and he recently received the Trump endorsement. Actually, on June 2nd was when Donald Trump officially backed him for the Republican nomination for U.S. Senate. And the reason why that is so significant is because he has already risen to popularity amongst the Arizona Republican Party simply due to this endorsement. Blake Masters said it himself. He could not win this primary without the Donald Trump endorsement. He couldn't win the general election without the Donald Trump endorsement and he got exactly what he needed. Now, his biggest opponent is Mark Brnovich. He is the current incumbent Arizona Attorney General, first elected back in 2014. And as a statewide elected official, he started out with the initial high numbers. If you take a look at the polling numbers, Mark Brnovich started out in the low to high 30s. Uh, sorry, low, uh, high 20s, low 30s. And then as the months went on and as 2022 hit, it started to sort of come to a point where Brnovich was no longer the favorite. In the five most recent polls, Brnovich is not the number one preferred nominee, even if he was maybe six months ago. And the candidate now, who seems to be in a position where the Trump endorsement really needs to benefit them, but also will be able to help, is Blake Masters. Blake Masters is currently in third place, but if you take a look at his numbers from June of 2021, he was polling in the low single digits. There's a reason why I now am more confident that Masters is going to win this nomination, especially when we have a bit more time for the nomination process to actually occur. In addition to that, I will say that Mark Brnovich has received a lot more attacks from Republicans, from Masters, from Trump even, that sort of give us this idea that the 2020 election is going to be a very big issue and Brnovich's intervention, or lack thereof rather, in the Arizona presidential certification is going to be a mainstream issue for this Republican primary. Now, if you take a look at the numbers, there actually is a different first place candidate, and that is Jim Lamont. Now, he's a solar power businessman, and I will say that as of right now, I don't know if he's going to truly be the biggest threat to Blake Masters, or if he truly will be in a first place position. The numbers might show us one thing, but it's such a close uh, margin here that really it could go any other way. And based off of what we've seen from just ads and expenses and endorsements, I do think that it will be a two-way race between Blake Masters and Mark Brnovich. Now, on the Democratic side, there really isn't any type of contention. Mark Kelly, as the incumbent, is absolutely going to win. And based off the endorsements that he has, it doesn't look as if there's any real opposition to him. Mark Kelly is going to win that Democratic primary, and he is going to head off into the general election. But the Republican primary, obviously, is a lot more difficult to see. But I do think that by the end of this, Blake Masters ends up winning. I also think other people expect it to be the exact same way. If you look at the predicted markets, and I've been using them a lot more recently, because political betting markets give you a general idea about where those with money and political knowledge end up investing. And it is sometimes accurate. Obviously, it's not a perfect science. But generally speaking, people don't like to lose money. They like to win money. And people aren't going to be as lopsided or biased or unwilling to recognize defeat when their money is at stake. If you had $100 and you're a Democrat and you were given the opportunity to bet on a political party as to who would win Wyoming in 2024, you might want the Democrats to win the three electoral votes there, but you know the Republicans are going to win there. Now, in a swing state, maybe such as North Carolina or Georgia or Arizona, you might have your own inherent bias. But knowing that you might lose $100 or you could make another $100, you might take a step back and recognize your own bias and actually look into some pure analytical thought. Well, that's exactly what happened here in the Arizona Republican Senate nomination, political betting market. And across the 90-day trend, Brnovich was number one. Masters was high up there, but Brnovich was still leading as of three months ago. And then the numbers started to get worse. 
Around the same time, the numbers started to get worse in the polling data. And now more recently, what you find is that Brnovich is at 14 cents for a yes share, Lamont is at 18 cents, and Masters is at 71 cents. I tend to like to uh, sort of move these over into percentages, meaning it's 73% chance for Masters, 15% chance for Brnovich, and 15% chance for Lamont. But I will say that people don't always agree with that type of uh, usage of the medic markets, but I will say that's the way that I look at it. And I think it's the way that you probably should look at it as well. The point being also that Blake Masters has had a recent surge to popularity. So let's talk about the way that I use to describe him, the adjective ahead of this title, and that's calling him a weak candidate. Let's talk about why I think he's weak. Let's talk about the state of Arizona, and let's talk about individually this general election between Blake Masters and Mark Kelly. So to begin, this was actually mainly inspired by a new statement from Blake Masters on the issue of gun violence. Now, Blake Masters has made it his very big uh, part of his campaign, and a very big part of his campaign, that he is pro-Second Amendment, and not necessarily in the same way that other Republicans might. He has insinuated that uh, AR-15s are meant for killing people, or even explicitly said it. He has sent out statements and made uh, taken position stances that don't exactly fit the median voters' view on gun control or the swing voters' view on gun control. Blake Masters is extremely pro-Second Amendment, extremely so, more so than even some other Republicans. Blake Masters is what many people would describe as a political extremist for the Republican Party. And when you take a look at statements like this from just a day ago, you find exactly where you get this idea and this understanding about Blake Masters. When Blake Masters was questioned about the issue of gun control and gun violence in this country, he says, quote, we do have a gun violence problem in this country. So he's recognizing that there is a problem, but he doesn't call it what it is. He says it's gang violence. Now, I will say that when a reporter or anyone is talking about gun violence right now, referencing the recent case in Uvalde, referencing the hundreds of other times that we've seen mass shootings over the past few years, they are not talking about gang violence most of the time. This is very clearly a pivot. But not only does he make it a pivot, he doubles down on it in a way that makes him, at least, not necessarily palatable to a swing voter. He blames and references black, uh, 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 mass shootings on black people. Says that very often you know black people, frankly, referencing the shootings in Chicago or St. Louis. What he is doing here is shifting the narrative from talking about those who go into schools and commit these mass shootings to getting into gun violence found in extremely uh, urban cities or, you know, different types of scenarios that very clearly aren't what the issue is when we're talking about child safety, when we're talking about gun violence, when we're talking about what it means to be in a position where someone can acquire a gun, can go into a school and can do unspeakable things. I mean, that is obviously where the very big disconnect comes between Blake Masters and a very other big issue that many voters seem to be unified across on in the nation, in Arizona, in these key counties that he needs to win. And I will say that while Blake Masters is taking an unpopular position, it's not one that I would say Republicans haven't said before. But the problem for Blake Masters is that he isn't just a Republican in a Marjorie Taylor Greene Republican type of district. He's not in an area that I would say is safe for him. Blake Masters is in a state that voted for Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election. He is in a state where the Democratic Party won the Senate election in the state of Arizona. Uh, he's in a state where the Democratic Party recently won the majority of the House reps from that state. This is not a state that I think would be willing to elect, or at least wanting to elect, someone of this caliber. Blake Masters also doesn't exactly provide the electability that I think we could have seen for a potential GOP nominee. The state of Arizona had one clear frontrunner before, someone who hasn't made statements of this caliber, and that was Governor Doug Ducey. Now, the problem with Governor Doug Ducey is that he's popular. Okay, wait, that's not a problem. Oh, he won re-election in 2018 by 14 points, despite Democrats doing well? That's also not a problem. The problem was that he certified the 2020 election results, and Donald Trump didn't like that. Well, Donald Trump made it his mission, even going so far as to saying that should Doug Ducey decide to run, 
that he would actually campaign for a Democrat. Now, that comment was more than likely made in jest. But the fact that Donald Trump would even entertain that idea, that he would not only not support, not endorse a Republican nominee for U.S. Senate, but that he would go into the opposition and help them. That's how much he hated Doug Ducey. Doug Ducey won re-election in 2018 by 14 points. That is substantial because Democrats were winning practically every other race that mattered. One of the main races, though, that they didn't win wasn't the Senate race because Democrats did win that, wasn't the key and competitive House races because they won all of those, but it was actually the Attorney General's race. And the second best candidate that I think could have ran was and is Attorney General Mark Burnovich. In 2018, he won by about three points across the state. 3.4% separated the Democrat and the Republican in the Arizona Attorney General's race. Now, if you're looking at the state of Arizona and their other elections, you actually find that the Secretary of State race went to the Democrats. They didn't win the governorship because Doug Ducey was so popular. But when you look at Mark Brnovich, he was outperforming practically every other Republican in Maricopa County, on the Senate level, on the statewide level, besides Doug Ducey. Mark Brnovich did what many of the Republicans failed to do. He did what was only really comparable and compatible with Governor Doug Ducey. And that's impressive. He provides this level of electability because he won in a blue wave year. Obviously, this wasn't a mainstream race, and it wasn't as contested as Democrats otherwise might have liked, and sure, it was a close race. But when you nominate and you choose someone, such as Blake Masters, who really has no political experience, has no level of electability or recency to his name, that's something that could be a problem. Because the Democrats, on the other hand, have an incumbent. They have someone who is popular. And Brnovich, while at a previous period of time was leading in the primary polls, is no longer leading. Republicans could have had a good nominee. I think Doug Ducey would have been perfect for the GOP, but clearly they had other plans. And it's also sort of this um, understanding that sometimes President Trump doesn't make the best choices. Donald Trump typically endorses those who would most closely align with him should they get elected. He probably could make a lot better choices, but specifically in the state of Arizona, I have seen a profound inability from Donald Trump to choose and field the right candidates. For instance, in this Senate race, why did he choose Blake Masters? If I was working for the NRSC and I was a, you know, intern in Washington, D.C., talking with them, hey, what are we doing with this? Figuring out who to field, figuring out who to choose. Well, when Donald Trump comes out and endorses potentially one of the more poor candidates for this race, I would be disappointed. Not only disappointed, but sort of just upset about this decision. Because Brnovich was right there. Ducey was right there. And all it needed was somebody to get over an election that was held fairly. And that didn't happen. Now, this is going down me more of criticizing the decisions by President Trump, but I also think that is fair. I do try to provide a political commentary on this, but there are some decisions that I think just simply were made for arbitrary reasons and the wrong reasons, because there were much more and much better political moves for the GOP. It also isn't just this. I mentioned Arizona in specific because I also wanted to talk about the governor's race in the state of Arizona. If you take a look at the uh, 2022 governor's race, the Democratic Party, that is the Senate race, the Democratic Party has Katie Hobbs. She actually is the Secretary of State. She won back in 2018. The Republicans, on the other hand, ran Carrie Lake. Now, she was previously running against Kimberly Yee, who I think would have been the strongest candidate. She's the Arizona State Treasurer, another statewide elected official. But Carrie Lake is a news anchor. And I'm not attacking her for being a news anchor. I'd love to be a news anchor. I'm not at all trying to criticize her in this sense. But what I am trying to say is that there's a very big contrast in an extremely and closely watched race. Extremely competitive and closely watched race. When you have someone who is electable and has been elected statewide, I'd opt to choose them for a general election and for a campaign of this caliber. And while Donald Trump is very big on choosing the outsider and outlier candidates, and sometimes it does pay off, I don't also think that Carrie Lake is the best candidate in terms of quality either. She has said a number of things very similar to the level of something you might hear from Blake Masters that has pushed some voters away from even supporting her. If you take a look at those who even recognize her name, she's not popular. When they do approval polls for Carrie Lake and they ask, have you ever heard of her and do you have an opinion on her, those who have heard of her don't tend to find her popular. And she also isn't doing that well when it comes down to preliminary election data. 
Carrie Lake should be walking away with this race, given our national circumstance, but she isn't. Blake Masters should be walking away with this, considering our national circumstance, but he isn't. And it comes down to the candidate quality and also what their intentions are. Neither Blake Masters nor Carrie Lake were in politics to the same extent. Masters worked in the Trump administration during the transition team, but he had not ran nor been elected in the state of Arizona. On the other hand, Republicans could have had Kimberly Yee, the state treasurer, who knows how to run in the state. They could have had Mark Brnovich, the attorney general, someone who knows how to run in the state. There were plenty of other options, and I think in this case, there is a weak one, and that is Blake Masters. I think Masters could still very well win, though. I will finish off by saying that because of where the state of Arizona is right now, the margin of victory for Biden wasn't exactly too hot. You take a look at the Senate race in the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly didn't exactly win by an extremely large margin. But Mark Kelly did outperform Biden, and I also think based off of where he is right now in terms of approval, he's not doing the worst, outperforming Biden by about eight points across the state, which means should Biden slightly rise, Mark Kelly might win. And should he remain where he is right now, Mark Kelly still about wins based off of our matchup data and our approval data. But of course, it didn't have to be that way for the GOP. This should have been an otherwisely, otherwise winnable race or easier to win race. Blake Masters definitely can win, though. I think, you know, looking at where the Republicans are up three points nationwide, probably more, where Biden is down 12 points nationwide, probably more. You know, what we are finding is that Democrats just simply aren't performing well. Inflation is doing bad, gas prices are through the roof, and everyone blames those in power regardless if it's their fault or not. I mentioned this when Donald Trump was getting a lot of the blame for COVID-19, when he was getting the blame in the initial wave of the pandemic, when every nation was facing the same exact threat, the same exact problem. And while, yes, maybe there were some precautions that Biden or Trump could have taken to avoid their major crises across the nation, they will still get a lot of blame for things that they simply don't do. But that's just American politics, and both parties always need to be prepared for it. And it sort of explains why in every midterm, you tend to see opposition parties do well, because things aren't always going to go super well for the first four years. Democrats and Republicans like to get things back on track ahead of the re-election bids for the presidential election, but they can't do that for all four years. They might try, but they never succeed. That's why for the past three decades, you've almost always seen the opposition party gain seats or regain control of one or two chambers of Congress in a midterm election year. There's something to think about. But for this U.S. Senate race in specific, I am not confident right now that the GOP is going to do as well as they would have liked. Arizona is a state that absolutely would still elect a Republican. It's by no means a safe blue state. But Blake Masters, while some on the right think, is this shining star and rising member of the GOP, he isn't as electable as people might make him out to be. This idea that he is going to win off of not being politically correct or being this outsider or someone who can offer business experience. That might have worked for Trump in 2016, but it also reduced the GOP's margin of victory in Arizona in 2016 by about six to seven points. Then four years later, they lost it. That type of strategy doesn't always work in Arizona. And Donald Trump just endorsed someone who is more than likely going to win that primary and potentially could lose the general election, whereas other Republicans simply might have not been in that position. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today. Sorry, tomorrow.